This right here, folks, is a big milestone in Jack's speedrunning. On December 20th, 2018, a runner by the name Luigi got Fire Canyon Skip for the first time ever without using debug mode or safe states on original hardware. What's up, Jack and Nexa fans? Boomer here. To put in perspective what exactly this achieves, let me go over the benefits real quick. The currently fastest time for game completion is just shy over 24 minutes. Using the Fire Canyon sequence break, the Any% percent speedrun can now beat the Precursor Legacy in roughly 16 to 18 minutes, as it completely cuts away any need to collect the required 20 Paracelts to activate the zoomer you'd normally use to get past the area, saving 6 to 8 minutes. As of now, this means the Any% percent speedrun of the game will pick up only 8 Paracelts, the 4 required cells in Geyser Rock, 1 cell at the end of Fire Canyon, as there is an invisible wall that you cannot get past without picking up the cell, one cell at the end of Mountain Pass, one cell at the end of Lava Tube, and one cell at the top of Golemaya Citadel. The skip has been worked on since the start of 2017, where Glitch Hunter, Speedrunner, and good friend of mine Bobby Kaze first completed the sequence break, performing out of bounds ledge grabs on the invisible damage plane in Fire Canyon with a lot of safe states, proving that the skip could technically be performed. Several iterations and half a year later, the so called infinite bounce was introduced to the skip, which now has been understood enough to be implemented into the sequence break. The reason Jack is not bouncing towards the start of Fire Canyon is that he has gotten out far enough without breaking a specific state Jack is in as he spawns, with which you can then freely control where the bounces go. Currently, the fastest way to get the infinite bounce to work is by chaining together three frame jumps and moving towards Fire Canyon right after Jack spawned. Once getting the infinite bounce, the game is trying to put Jack on any sort of ground which makes him bounce towards certain objects Jack could die on, ultimately leading to failing the skip in case of a death. Besides a few specific instances, imagine there being a radius around Jack, and if something you can land on enters it as you bounce, you'll get magnetized towards it. In the case of Fire Canyon, that can either be orb crates, scudfly boxes, dark eco crates, blue eco ends, the wooden health crates, and any normal geometry like the start and the end of the level, as well as precursor ramps. Because of that, the first big obstacle in the skip is this bridge with an orb crate on it that you will need to bypass. This may sound easy at first, but it requires a very particular setup which can take several hours of attempts before finally getting it. Once past it though, you will come to another box on yet another bridge, which you will also need to perform specific bounces around. Another point where you can easily choke the skip is the precursor ramp right after. It once again requires specific setups and bounces to get past. Reminder that a single mistake anywhere during these bounces can ruin the trick entirely, requiring you to start all over again. Later in the level, there will be dark eco boxes, which you will have to get lunged towards and hit the corners or sides of them to avoid death. If Jack hits the sides or the corners of these boxes, it will not kill him as it destroys them, allowing him to keep on bouncing. The final section involves navigating around some more obstacles until you reach the end, where you turn the camera around facing the front of Jack to ensure you get the end checkpoint. Again, you are required to pick up the cell as there is an invisible wall preventing you to progress and it only disappears once you collected the cell. And all of what I just mentioned took years to figure out, as well as a lot of patience and practice by all the people involved making this skip possible. So a big shout out to everyone who has worked on this and also big props to Luigi for being the first person ever to complete the sequence break in a RTA setting. Links to my social media are in the description below, and if you want to get involved regarding news about the Jack and Axis series, I recommend subscribing to my channel as I will be covering more news like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care and bye bye.